You are listening to part 10 of the podcast series, As a Man Thinketh. A man may be honest in certain directions, yet suffer privations. A man may be dishonest in certain directions, yet acquire wealth. But the conclusion usually formed that the one man fails because of his particular honesty, and that the other prospers because of his particular dishonesty, is the result of a superficial judgment which assumes that the dishonest man is almost totally corrupt, and the honest man almost entirely virtuous. In the light of a deeper knowledge and wider experience, such judgment is found to be erroneous. The dishonest man may have some admirable virtues which the other does not possess, and the honest man obnoxious vices which are absent in the others. The honest man reaps the good results of his honest thoughts and acts. He also brings upon himself the sufferings which his vices produce. The dishonest man likewise garners his own suffering and happiness. It is pleasing to human vanity to believe that one suffers because of one's virtue, but not until a man has extirpated every sickly, bitter, and impure thought from his mind, and washed every sinful stain from his soul, can he be in a position to know and declare that his sufferings are the result of his good and not of his bad qualities. And on the way to, yet long before he has reached that supreme perfection, he will have found, working in his mind and life, the great law which is absolutely just, and which cannot therefore give good for evil, evil for good. Possessed of such knowledge, he will then know, looking back upon his past ignorance and blindness, that his life is and always was justly ordered, and that all his past experiences, good and bad, were the equitable outworking of his evolving yet unevolved self. Good thoughts and actions can never produce bad results. Bad thoughts and actions can never produce good results. This is but saying that nothing can come from corn but corn, nothing from nettles but nettles. Men understand this law in the natural world and work with it, but few understand it in the mental and moral world, though its operation there is just as simple and undeviating, and they therefore do not cooperate with it. Suffering is always the effect of wrong thought in some direction. It is an indication that the individual is out of harmony with himself, with the law of his being. The sole and supreme use of suffering is to purify, to burn out all that is useless and impure. Suffering ceases for him who is pure. There could be no object in burning gold after the dross had been removed and a perfectly pure and enlightened being could not suffer. 